Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Thursday sort of afternoon here in Australia. Uh, things are looking a little bit shaky, so the market has taken a dump again. It's as soon as Bitcoin kind of gets up around that thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six thousand dollar range, it just gets a quick rejection, and that is still continuing. And we can see, look, some of the altcoins they just, you know, they get a little bit wrecked here. But again, the seven-day period generally they've still done all right. But market cap back under $1.5 trillion. So we we're over oh so briefly, uh, and now we're back to $1.4 trillion. Bitcoin dominance really dropping though, 42.9%. Ethereum dominance, I think this was about 18% yesterday, so it's down a little bit. And for some reason, uh, we've got no uh, clue of what's happening on gas. It says non-applicable, so maybe that means uh, Ethereum gas prices are free for a little while. I don't like our chances, but who knows. But all right, Bitcoin down, basically everything down by the looks of it over the last 24 hours, which would, you know, kind of replicate why the entire market is down, you know, 4.4%. But has anything performed well in the top 24? Oh, sorry, in the last 24 hours in the top 100? All right, Flow still doing all right. Stacks doing well. Decentraland, Axe Infinity, Engine. So there's a couple of gains there, a couple of good gainers too, then a couple of okay gainers, and then we're really just into the low kind of single digit sort of territory. And that means that if we've got very few gainers, then the losses are probably going to be uh, reasonable size ones. But again, the market's only down 4.4%, so hopefully nothing too bad. There we go, KuCoin taking back some of those gains, Sushi Swap, Telcoin, Compound, Synthetics Network, you name it, they're all kind of falling back a little bit, which is again why I said just be careful with the altcoins at the moment. Look, in the last seven days, they have made uh, some good gains there, but these can be chewed up pretty quickly if Bitcoin continues to go down, and it is looking a little bit shaky at the moment, so that's what has me uh, worried. Now again, not overly worried, but definitely somewhat concerned. So look, losses, again, only really kind of, you know, a couple in the double digits and then we're kind of going down into single digits. But again, you know, someone's probably bought these uh, pumps in the last few days and then is down a bit, so it hurts for them, you know. If you bought these coins last year, then you're probably still well in profit, but again, not so great. So let's move on to the Bitcoin chart. As we can see here, this has now had two days selling off. Is this an early sell-off before a weekend pump? Oh, I don't know. The volume is really, really low. And again, that we're selling off, you know, sort of midweek before we even get to the weekend definitely has me concerned. And any kind of pump we might have over the weekend will likely be chewed up on Monday with any CME gaps that get caused. Now we can see the RSI is starting to roll over though. It was looking oh so promising. You know, we were touching on this halfway point uh, and then we just keep coming down and down and down and down now we are still holding this upwards trend but look I've got to admit I am somewhat concerned at the moment I am now starting to worry that we just keep you know we can't break above this mark and now 36,000 is really becoming uh, a test that maybe we are going to come well down into the $30,000 mark uh, over this weekend and possibly even come down and test this and again if we lose this mark here at around about sort of 28,000 ish thereabouts we're probably going to go all the way down to around about sort of 24,000 so this is where uh, we'll be heading and if Bitcoin does that whew, altcoins uh, Ethereum you name it they're all going to get hit, hit pretty hard not saying that is what's going to happen, but I'm definitely concerned. Even here, this MACD change that we saw, it looked really strong, got a bit weak, and then there was hardly any follow through it, and it looks like it's getting ready to kind of roll over again, and that is going to be really scary. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. All right, moving on. So Ash Egan launches VC fund with $55 million uh, in inception capital. So Ash Egan, a partner at... Uh, Accomplice VC for the last three years is opening his own fund called Acrylic. Egan has raised $55 million from an array of funds and investors, including uh, Sendana, a fund of funds, 
I think that is, Accomplice, which is his former employer, Digital uh, Currency Group, so they're in basically everything, Coindesk Parents Company, uh, the founder of Bison Trails and the crypto staking company that was acquired by Coinbase and others. So again, $55 million. It still shows that there's a lot of money coming into this space. But again, most of the money, and this is what people are failing to realize, is that it's going into the kind of brick and mortar stuff, you know, the picks and shovels and all that. It's not so much going into the cryptocurrency itself. It's in all the platforms and things around it. And I mean, these are just VC firms. So they're going to, you know, buy up uh, cryptocurrency, but it's going to be in startups. It's in things that haven't even hit the market. So, you know, any money that they put in won't really affect the market. It's not to say they can't put any money into, you know, good projects that are maybe now at a really cheap price. They could but it definitely is something that they more focus on sort of startups and things like that. So unfortunately, you know, this $55 million uh, in seed money, it's probably not really going to do anything for the price of crypto, uh, for the price of cryptos at the moment. But again, it does show that, look, there's still plenty of money coming into this space, but it's coming in because things are so quiet, and that's what they're going to do. They're generally not going to do it before a big dump, but... Look, they have been wrong before, and that's not to say, again, things are looking pretty shaky over here on the Bitcoin charts, that a big dump isn't coming. Some more bullish news, though. The UFC partners with Crypto.com, and sources say a $175 million deal uh, is MMA's firm's largest sponsorship. So Crypto.com starting to get some money out there, like FTX doing the same, you know, getting into the Formula Ones. Bitcoin did the same. FTX, I think, has also got the naming rights to the Miami Heats stadium for the next, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. So it says the cryptocurrency exchange Crypto.com has revealed the company has entered a partnership with the Ultimate Fighting Championships, UFC, as the firm's global fight kit partner. Reports uh, stemming from people familiar with the matter say the partnership is a 10-year deal worth $175 million and the UFC's largest sponsorship deal to date. So UFC is quite big. It's, you know... It's died off a little bit with the pandemic. Most sports have, you know, without the crowds, they're just not the same. But $175 million being put into uh, getting sponsorship deals through this, you know, at some stage when this, you know, pandemic stuff is all kind of done, hopefully the world opens up and, you know, sports start to, you know, become the spectacles that they used to be with all the crowd fanfare, then that kind of adver advertising by crypto.com uh, you know, it, it'll be priceless. Just at the moment, though, things are, you know, particularly here in Australia, you know, we got some more lockdowns and things happening in places around Australia. A couple of small scale breakouts, nothing too big, but, you know, this is the way it's kind of been for a while. You know, it slowly quietens down and we feel like we're getting back to normalcy and then it'll just kick off again. And it's happening in other places around the world as well. We're still not quite over it. And again, that's why, you know, there's not a whole lot happening in the markets at the moment. You know, investors are still very, very nervous. All right, Alchemy. So Ethereum blockchain developer platform Alchemy has integrated with Polygon to supercharge development and provide more tools for DAP uh, developers. So Polygon, you know, is there anyone that's, you know, not partnered up with Polygon at the moment? Yeah, doesn't really look like it. You know, you go to Polygon and look at all the partnerships they have. Basically, everyone's jumped on board. And I mean, you know, Ethereum 2.0, you know, every time we think it's kind of close, then there's another kind of delay and it gets pushed back, you know, just a little bit more. So really, Polygon is the go-to solution at the moment. And yeah, so glad I invested in Polygon. I hope you did the same. You know, it was $2.20. I think it's trading around about a dollar something now. So provided you think we're in a bull market still, you know, a bearish trend possibly within a bull market. But if you think we're in a bull market, then chances are good that, you know, Polygon or, you know, have some pretty good gains uh, in the not too distant future should the market start to rise. And again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. All right. So again, more crypto adoption uh, continues. So guests of the Pavilions Hotel and Resorts can now pay for their accommodation with over 40 cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum. The service will be available from uh, today, July the 7th. Look, I think some cryptos will definitely be used to pay for things, but not many. I couldn't see too many people spending their Bitcoin and Ethereum, except for maybe, 
you know, when they feel like it's at some, you know, sort of crazy peak, then they might. But it does go to show that, you know, the appetite is still out there. Even businesses are like, yep, we'll accept your crypto. You just hope that they understand they'll probably have to hold on to this crypto for a while unless they can sell it really, really quickly uh, and change it over, which it seems like they might, though. Because the Pavilions Hotel and Resorts partnered up with the cryptocurrency trading platform CoinDirect to provide its clients the option of digital asset payment. So it sounds like they probably will swap their uh, cryptos over into cash uh, almost immediately. That's what CoinDirect will do, will facilitate that. But again, it shows the appetite is there. People are happy to accept it. And again, at least it sounds like they'll be, uh, well, is that a bonus? I don't know. That they'll be quickly able to change over, you know, accepting Bitcoin or Ethereum and put it straight into dollars. Yeah, maybe. Short term it could be. Long term, possibly not. But again, they still need their money to, you know, cover their overheads and that. So whether they put some of the crypto aside for later and, you know, long term holds or it all just goes straight over into sort of fiat, who knows? But again, the services are there. They continue to grow. Right, the SEC closes in on settlements with US BitConnect promoters for millions. Whew, this is pretty interesting. Half these names I didn't even know of, so this is what I found even more interesting. So the agreement includes more than $3 million settlement from Joshua uh, Hepson, don't even know of him, uh, and a $576,000 from his fiancée, Laura Mascola, never heard of her, uh, and another $526,000 from Ryan Mason of o Masson of Oklahoma. Again, I'd never heard of any of these guys, and an unspecified amount from uh, Michael Noble of California. So never heard of any of these people. These next two I have. So it says the two remaining defendants, Trevon Brown of South Carolina and Craig Grant from Florida, are yet to agree to settlement terms with the SEC. So these two I'd heard of, uh, both uh, big YouTubers and, you know, were really, yeah, absolutely pumping it. But one I'm surprised to not see here is Crypto Nick. Like, he was, you know, massive into it as well. He was one of the big sort of YouTubers at the time and he was really pumping it and telling everyone that there was millions to be made and, you know, all this uh, BitConnect money that he was making and he was also shilling the... Uh, mining things that were going that, you know, you didn't make two cents from. They were basically the biggest waste of money. But it was all the referral bonuses and things that uh, these guys were getting that was really making them the big money as well. So, yeah, I mean, Crypto Nick was 17 at the time. I mean, he'd be, you know, 20-something now. Yeah, I am still surprised that they didn't go after him and have somehow decided to go after, you know, Trevon uh, and Craig Grant but left him out. And these other people, again, who I'd never even heard of but... Again, it goes to show the long arm of the law will eventually catch up with you. And, you know, I'd like to think that Crypto Nick hasn't simply got away scot-free because he was young. He still made a ton of money. He was getting Bitcoin hand over fist uh, through BitConnect uh, and, you know, multiple other sort of referral bonus kind of things that he was involved in. But anyway, there you go, BitConnect. Yeah. <laughs> it's not over until it's over. And again, you know, I mean... This thing took in billions of dollars. Uh, there was even an Australian guy that uh, has been charged. And, you know, three million from three billion. Oof, I don't know if that's really going to worry these people too much because they probably made, you know, five, ten times that much. But again, who knows? Penalty still has to be paid. And at least, you know, they haven't simply just let it go. But, you know, is that really going to deter people? Yeah, not so sure. All right, last but not least. Right, so DeFi aggregator Xeron snags $8.2 in Series A funding. So again, there's still, you know, millions of dollars being poured into cryptocurrency at the moment by, you know, big firms, hedge funds and VCs and things like that. And quite often the VCs are part of hedge funds anyway. So executives representing investors Mosaic Ventures and Placeholder have joined Xeron's board of directors as part of the deal. So the non-custodial aggregation platform facilitates access to more than 60 Ethereum-based protocols, such as Aave, Yearn Finance, Curve. Xeron has processed more than 600 million worth of volume in 2021 so far, so that's only half the year. 
uh, with a medium trade of around about $1,000. The, the raise was led by Mosaic Ventures and also featured participation from Placeholder, Digital Currency Group again, and Blockchain.com Ventures, amongst others. So Xeron is planning to enable support for other popular blockchains, such as Layer 2s that are currently, that are, sorry, are sufficiently popular uh, among DeFi users during the third quarter. So again, if we get this DeFi summer that everyone's talking about, I think it's probably going to more going to be more a DeFi uh, sort of fall. I think it'll come after summer. I think we'll probably be pretty quiet for a while. And again, even looking like we might dip down, and then we may start to see some really good movement. But at the moment, again, you know, just got to go back to this. It's not looking great. We are dipping down again. And look, there's just no volume. We've got a weekend coming up. You know, as long as we sort of stay above this line. It's still not overly bearish, but if we definitely drop below this, uh, we could consider it to be fairly bearish. Because, I mean, you know, you could move this uh, line to be kind of going along here, and that means we are under it. So, scary times. No panic buttons at the moment, but, yeah, I wouldn't be rushing out and buying altcoins just yet. I know a lot of people have, and things have looked good, you know, over the last seven days. And that's kind of this kind of stuff here and now it's rolling over and if it starts to break down then again those altcoins any kind of gains you made unless you've already taken your profits you're probably going to get punished but that's only if bitcoin rolls over if bitcoin can kind of hold and just stay traveling sideways and maybe even slowly just moving its way up then altcoins are going to do well but anything other than that it's not looking pretty all right that's it for me stay safe be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment, but if you did, congratulations to you because you've outplayed the market, and I'll see you next time.